Hey, today's topics we're going to be going over are getting started, uh, what you're going to do about you know going out to begin your car buying process, uh, understanding your credit, budgeting, car shopping considerations, new, used, or leased. Uh, this was a very big topic of uh, questions that uh, came through prior to the meeting. Uh, financing, protecting your investment, and some best practices that Nicole and I came up with that should help you uh, in your car buying ventures. Okay, so where do I begin? Um, when looking to purchase a new vehicle, there are going to be three main considerations you got to keep in mind. Uh, the price of your car that you're going to purchase, the value of the trade-in, if applicable. Um, if you don't have a trade-in, there will only be two items that you need to really focus on. Uh, and then interest rate and term that you're going to go. Um, I wanted to mention utilizing online resources not to buy cash if you can help it. Um, a good opportunity for you to become an educated buyer when you're trying to purchase a vehicle. And I'm going to go into the main considerations in detail. So you've got, um, again, using the dealer website to get an idea of what you're looking for and what you're going to pay. Um, a lot of trim levels with different vehicles uh, that can dictate whether or not the price is going to be lower or higher. So you want to really look into those things and try to figure out what's going to be most affordable for you and what you're looking for. So you're going to be happy with the vehicle. Uh, even multiple dealer uh, websites would be helpful to be able to compare and contrast what prices are going to be. Uh, then your trade-in value. Uh, this is extremely important to know because you could have negative or positive equity when walking into a dealership. Um, know what you owe is the last line here. That is extremely important because your lender, your current lender, will have a payoff amount that you'll need to pay in order to be able to move on from that vehicle into your new one. Uh, and again, this is if you have an open loan with a different bank. Uh, but there are several websites you can use to to decide what the value of your vehicle is and then compare it to what you owe on the vehicle at that time. Uh, and I've listed them here, Edmonds, KBB, and ADA. Uh, it is always a ballpark figure. I encourage you to be realistic about the uh, condition of your vehicle where it asks you for clean, um, super clean. It could say not so clean. So you want to really be, you want to be realistic about that. Uh, so you're getting a true ballpark figure when you walk into the dealership and know how much your value, the value of your trade is worth. Um, I personally am a big fan of CarMax. Uh, can walk in there. They will give me a piece of paper when I leave and tell me for the next seven days, this is how much they're going to give you for the vehicle that I've, I've asked them to, to appraise. Uh, so that's always a big hit uh, for me. I, I would highly recommend it to, for our, our audience to go ahead and do that as well. Uh, and then your interest rate and terms. Um, in a lot of cases, the term, the rate is going to be determined by your credit rating, and we're going to go into that. Um, the terms can really be based on the year of the car and the lender itself. Uh, the historical, the typical terms that you're going to see these days are anywhere from ranging from 36 to 84 months with some minor variances to that. Um, but you have to kind of know what kind of payment you're going to be looking for. And hopefully by the end of this conversation, you'll be a little bit more educated on what that looks like. I'm going to turn it over to Nicole here, and she's going to go over the understanding your credit. All right. Good morning, everyone. So this is where we start first, right? We are wanting to purchase a new vehicle or use, possibly trade in. Um, we need to understand where we personally, as in you, lie on this um, credit scale. And so how this works is there's three major players in this game. And you can see them listed. We've got Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Um, I'm sure you've seen these before, possibly maybe in a commercial, um, amongst other things. Now, how these work is they each individually have their own scoring process engage and that's what's going to make up that credit score number that we've all heard about so um again they use their own scores they're all different but they help you gauge where you lie as far as your credit history maybe perhaps what we need to work on um and we'll go into that next 
So again, and I know I, I mentioned commercials before, but I always see these commercials, you know, it's got good credit and you want to make it excellent. Um, so on, so forth. So these are the number ranges um, as far as how they're broken down. We've got excellent credit ranging from 850 to 760. Very good ranging from 760 to 725. Good ranging from 725 to 660. Fair at 660 to 560. There are not a lot of numbers. I'm sorry, you guys. And bad going from 560 to 300. Um, so I know sometimes um, when they say good or very good, you're not sure exactly what they're meaning as far as the range. Well, this is it. This is what we're looking at here. A lot of lenders, and I'll chime in here, uh, are going to look at different variables when it comes to these ranges. I want to make sure the audience knows that this is not a for sure. It's based off the lender, but it is a very good gauge for you to kind of know where you sit and what your interest rates are going to look like. Absolutely. Again, it's really good to have this knowledge um, going into the car buying process. So next, we're going to break it down even further for you. So these are kind of the subcategories that we've broken this score down into. Um, so this is going to go over probably, you know, they're gauging really your last 24 months, maybe some even more. So this is all based on your history, where we're going, um, where you've been and, uh, and what we, and what we want. So we've got, I would say 35% of this as it's listed is your payment history. They're looking to see, do you pay on time? Do you pay the minimum? Do you pay more of the minimum? Do we have any late impact or late payments, any negative impact? So that's a big one. You know, it holds the most value because it's really giving these um, these dealers and these lenders a chance to really gauge, you know, where you are in your life. We've got amount owed holding the next largest um, subcategory at 30%. You know, do we have previous um, credit lines out? How much do you owe on them? You know, do we have tons of credit cards or do we not have many at all? Um you know, what percentage are we using? You know, it says here the recommended amount to be using is about 30% of your um, allotted credit. So, you know, these are really great ways to gauge where you are personally, lifetime, and either work on them to enhance them or go, you know what, I'm at a really good spot right now. Let's roll with this. Um, length of credit history. That's a really big one for a lot of people. Um, you know, this gives them the gauge to know, hey, you know what, they, they've got a really good history or a long history of good payments. Um, you know, sometimes you might be, say, fresh out of college or you might be 18 um, and we need to start working on our length of history. Um, you know, everybody's got to start somewhere. We've got types of credit. You know, is it all auto? Is it home? Is it credit cards? school loans. We need to have a variety of credit going on so that we can get a gauge on, hey, you know what, I can handle all these buckets and I can handle them well. Um, and new credit, again, that's a big one too. Are we out, you know, buying a car and we just got a credit card? You know, we don't want to pack it up too much so that it's risk. But you still want a little bit of everything if you can and have it, you know, obviously we'd like it to be positive, but life does happen. So this does give you a gauge on those areas that you can work on to improve. And I'll just chime in with, um, you know, the auto loans being a big thing because we are on a uh, how to become a car buying ace webinar. Uh, that is going to be a big part of when you go into the dealership, what kind of interest rate you're going to be looking at. Uh, it's not impossible to get it if you don't have one. There's a lot of first-time buyers out there. Um, but in essence, they're going to have to pay a little bit more or charge a little bit more interest on those if you don't have the auto loan showing. So uh, it's always going to help when you have one there. All right, so just some things to know. Um, we just went over knowing your credit score. Uh, there is one there's a quite a, a variety of things that you can do to know your score. Um, your credit cards can have that score on there. Uh, credit Karma is another one that I personally use quite often. Uh, these are gauges. They're not exact uh, because the, the way that the credit bureaus report your credit, uh, it's not going to be specific to 
unless you're on the day of pulling your credit. So it's important that you have a good gauge of when your what your credit score looks like before going into the dealership. It will help you to determine if you're getting a good rate based off of the score that you've got. Uh, so look into that. We've also got some uh, resources at the end of our webinar here that will give you the websites that you can go to to get that kind of thing. Uh, free annual credit report does it. Uh, as you can see there, reduce your outstanding debt. This is a big one because when you know you're going to purchase a house or a car loan, the best thing you can do for your credit score is to try to reduce some of that debt. Uh, that's why a lot of folks will go out during tax season to, to be able to get a car loan. Um, you know, with all the relief coming from the government right now, you can use that to reduce your outstanding debt. Uh, but whatever you can do to try to reduce that outstanding debt will weigh, will impact your credit score, therefore impacting the rate that you're going to pay. Uh, minimize credit inquiry. Uh, we don't want to go around trying to purchase stuff uh, with your credit 30, 60, 90 even days before trying to go purchase a car loan. Uh, give you some time for those credit inquiries to kind of, you know, simmer there and, you know, not hurt your credit so much. They don't impact your credit score a ton, but there could be five to 10 point difference that you could have seen if you didn't have the credit inquiry. So be careful with that. Um, your credit is used by the lenders to predict the likelihood of repayment. So if the factors before on the slide prior uh, come into play, and let's say you're not up to par on those those slide the slide prior, uh, it's going to dictate the likelihood of your repayment. Therefore, probably charging you more interest. If you've covered all those bases, obviously your your payment's going to be lower. Uh, and then, of course, going into credit can affect your interest rate. Uh, determine if you're able to receive the financing. So, having the good credit score is important. Budgeting. Um, know your net monthly income. Uh, this is extremely important because there is a difference between gross and net income. So when you talk about net income, net income is what you take home every month. It is the exact amount that you get in your bank account or in your pocket, whatever it might be. So knowing that figure will help you to be able to track your budget. Uh, know your expenses. The expenses are uh, typically, you know, you want to be somewhere roughly around 50% debt ratio, debt to income. And we're going to go over that on a, a different slide here. Uh, so just kind of know your expenses, know what you're paying monthly, make a month budget. I do this religiously for myself. Uh, I constantly monitor it uh, by tracking my expenses and income. Uh, I want to make sure that I have, I know exactly how much money is going out and how much is that exactly is coming in. Uh, evaluating your spending choices. You know, can I afford this? Um, do I get this new credit card at Macy's or, you know, Home Depot to to have that balance on there? Can I afford that? So you got to evaluate your spending. Uh, continually refining your budget goes along with that because you're basically making sure that that monthly payment is affordable. Uh, whenever you have new debts come on, that's extremely important. Uh, consider your insurance. Your insurance payment, uh, a lot of people don't realize, but when you go out to purchase a vehicle, uh, your insurance payment is part of the payment that you're going to be paying. So make sure you consider how much insurance you're going to be paying monthly uh, as part of your budgeting when you're looking to purchase a vehicle. And then, of course, I always say don't forget your savings. You know, put some money away. Uh, you never know when you might have a rainy day that you need that. So uh, moving on. As I discussed, we're going to go over debt ratio, and it's, this is something that most lenders will use uh, it, it, or consider when trying to give you a loan for a vehicle. Um, what I've done here is I've included your rent factor, monthly payments from your credit report, but do not include living expenses like groceries, gas, electric, et cetera. Um, the reason that they say a 50% debt ratio, between 40 and 50, I should say, is an appropriate debt ratio to have or less than that um, is because of the others like groceries, gas, electric. So this way, the other 50% can be used towards that. Uh, the formula for this is very simple. Debt, your total monthly debts, as I said here, your rent, uh, anything on your credit report divided by your total monthly net income. That's what you take home monthly. 
Uh, you could actually do it by gross income. Uh, some companies do do gross. Some uh, also do net. So it just depends on the company you're working with. So you can have both of those figures. Uh, I've got an example here. So, for example, let's say on your credit report, uh, your minimum monthly payment totals $150 in all your credit cards a month. Uh, your rent factor is $800 a month. And your car loan is going to be $400 a month. Uh, that would be total debt of $1,350. Total income, let's say, for example, of $3,000 a month, $1,350 divided by three thirty thousand. Excuse me, three thousand is forty-five percent debt to income, and that would be what your ratio would be. Car shopping considerations, uh, another one that came up quite often. So we're going to go into detail on this one, and I'm going to turn it over to Nicole here. All right. Car buying considerations, um, another another big one. You know, we have to determine our wants and our needs. You know, let's be let's be realistic. Do we need a car that we know we're going to be driving a lot on the highway? Are we going to be in town? You know, do we need space? Are we you know taking kids to soccer, or are we just it's, you're just zipping around? Um, so we definitely need to go through what um, what. Again, what your wants and your needs are, and let's be realistic about them. Um, again, safety and reliability, that's another big one. Um, I think sometimes we get so excited in the, in the aspect of buying a car that we totally forget about all of the really, really important stuff because, you know, we're just excited to get that new car smell, I being one of them. Um, <laughs> we're all human. It's all right. Um, finding the trim level that's right for you. Yeah, trim level is going to be uh, one of those things that is, you know, do I buy the XLT? Do I buy the XL? Do I buy the SE of this model of car? Do I buy the uh, XE of this car? Uh, each trim level, and I had mentioned this earlier in the in the webinar, is going to dictate price. Um, but these are the bells and whistles, and you just need to know what's affordable for you in that area. Um, determining what you can afford. So I think that this is a really big gauge, um, especially that I think is kind of under, <laughs> under, uh, under thought about. Um, and I think that a lot of people have this really great idea of, you know, what they want, but we have to be realistic, right? So this is all going to determine what can we afford? What can we put down? Um, you know, we're going to go over negotiating the price. I, I really think that in the in the modern day of car buying, instead of negotiating a price, I think I like the idea of know the price. Kind of know where your max amount payment for the month can be, and and really what you will not do over that. And I think that by you know gauging your finances, going through your credit, like we've already discussed, figuring out your debt to income, and figuring out what what you really need to be able to afford a month, instead of negotiating a price with the dealer, let's go in knowing that price so that we're not looking at a, um, for example, a pie in the sky car that we really shouldn't be getting and getting something more realistic. Um, and, you know, these days the dealers are really great. You can say, this is my range. This is really where I want to be for the month. And they can, they'll show you what options that you can fit into that. Um, and also knowing what products are for you, you know, are we going to need all these warranties? Are we going to need, um, you know, factory warranty or extended? Do we need power locks, power windows? Do we, you know, do we need navigation, backup camera? These are all going to be um, different per the individual, but very, very important that we thought all of this through before we set, set foot in the dealership. All right, we're going to move on to car shopping during a pandemic. Uh, we thought this would be fitting for now. Uh, we want the folks out there to feel pretty confident to go in. Nicole, you want to kind of go over this slide? For yeah, absolutely. You know, John and I are um, in and out of car dealerships all day long. So this has really been um, a different time that we've all been in growing and learning throughout this whole thing. And I will say it's been very impressive to see this industry um, adapt and grow at the rate it has amongst, you know, many other other industries as well. Um, so I would say best place to start is online. It's 2021. We all know how to use the computer. Um, and if not, we have somebody that at this point can help us. Um, search, 
search all your local dealers, you know, find, find, uh, again, know your price, maybe find the price range you like, figure out what miles, um, you know, you're kind of going for, whether that be, you know, zero miles because you want a new car, or maybe that's 30,000 miles on a used car. And, and look around the inventory online. If it's online, it's, it's usually on the lot. They're, they are very, very good about keeping this updated daily, hourly, all of the above. Um, you know, the dealers, just like everything else, we are in a, we are in a different age of really this deal can be put together by the time you get to the dealership, if that is what you agree on. Um, you know, we've got electronic contracting going through the majority of the stores. Um, we even have some dealers um, who are delivering vehicles right to your door. Now, I'm going to say each dealer is different, and some of them may or may not have a mileage cap, but that absolutely, you know, is a, is a reality right now. So make sure that if you, if, you know, if, if that's something you're interested, go ahead and ask that dealer. Um, we have, you know, they have implemented so many um, procedures that that are new to make the customer and not only the customer, but them themselves that are working in these places feel safe. And I mean, John, I think you you can agree with me. Sure. I think that they are doing a phenomenal job. You know, um, I, I, I feel safe. I feel clean. Um, you know, I think that everybody's really adapted very well and safe during this time and put in place tons of new ways and resources to buy a car um, if that's where you're at in, in life. Yeah, and I'll reiterate, uh, during the pandemic here, you know, there is always concern where you go to. Uh, so I, I feel very confident in this slide and explaining that the dealerships that we are going to, uh, we have lots of partners in the Orlando, Central Florida area, really, um, that are have done gone way above and beyond to try to make sure everything is clean, cleanliness, um, distancing, things like that. So I, I recommend if you're going in that uh, you're not too concerned about it at that moment. All right, new used or lease. And I'm going to have Nicole go over buying a new car, disadvantages and advantages. All right, well, I am a sucker for new cars. One of my favorite things to do is just to walk by every door and smell inside of it because I just get so excited with the new car smell. So advantages. Obviously, we get the new car smell. Um, they're usually the most reliable because they have the, you know, the least amount of wear and tear, we like to say, on them. Um, you will be covered by the manufacturer warranty up to set for several years. Um, you know, and that can, that can be a different range of miles or bumper to bumper or years. Um, depending on, you know, the manufacturer itself. And it is typically the easier way to get exactly what you wish for. You know, if you wanted the, the tan interior with the, the gray paint, um, most out of the time we can make that happen with a new car. Um, trim level. Yes. Yep. And then, you know, disadvantages. New cars can be more expensive. And, you know, with that also comes higher insurance costs and registration fees, you know, we do have t title transfers and creating a new tag and, uh, you know, uh, amongst other things. Um, and as we all know, the value of the vehicle does depreciate. I know we've all heard it the minute it drives off a lot, and that is true, but that is just part of what comes with buying a new car. All right, Nicole, tell us about some used vehicle advantages and disadvantages. All right. Buying a used vehicle. Obviously, the used cars can be cheaper. Um, the value of the car tends to slow down once it's used, so we're not depreciating as quickly. So that is definitely nice. Um, it can come with a, you know, with a certified pre-owned from the manufacturer. Um, so if you ever hear the term CPO, that is certified pre-owned. John, do you want to um, throw in there with that? Yeah. With, with, uh, that with, a, with a CPO, it's going to cost a little bit more. Uh, but it is something that the manufacturer uh, signs off on at the dealership level. So if the dealer is uh, selling a CPO unit, the manufacturer has said you've met all the requirements that are necessary to become a CPO. Uh, it just gives a little bit extra warranty on the car to where you're not having to worry so much about things like brake pads, um, you know, maintenance of the overall maintenance of the vehicle, tire wear and tear, 
Uh, these are things that they're going to look over, and there's multiple, multiple things. They have a, a big checklist they have to go through. I won't name them all, but uh, just know when you do a CPO, it does cost a little bit more, but it could be much it, it could be worth it in the end when you talk about the reliability of the car you're purchasing. Yeah, it's you know it's them giving you two thumbs up. You're getting into a a, a, a good you know unit. All right, so we've got disadvantages, and there are you know just like there are with the, the new, there are with the used, and you know I think one of the biggest one is we really don't know where this car has been, right? We don't know the history, we don't know its past day to day. I mean, there are definitely um, ways to figure out how many owners it's had, if it's been an accident, and the dealers will have already gone through that um, with you, and you will know all that information. But again, you never really, really, truly know what it did before you got into it. Um, yeah, Carfax is a great one. You know, just like here at Edition, we we make sure that we've gone through the Carfax. We make sure that our customers, our members, are getting into safe and reliable used cars. Um, making sure that everybody's everybody's secure in this deal. Don't be afraid to ask for the Carfax. It's extremely important when you're buying a used vehicle. Uh, take a look, see if there was any damage, see if you're okay with the damage. Sometimes damaged cars doesn't mean that they're not very good, right. uh, but it, knowing that you've had some damage is better than finding out later. So car factor is a very important thing. Great tool, great tool. Um, also with used cars, you know, at this point, depending on the mileage and, um, you know, how, what year this car was made, we have we tend to run into maybe our manufacturer warranty expiring. Um, or being expired. So that's another thing that we have to think about is, are we needing to purchase, um, you know, extended warranty, which not too long from here, we're going to follow up on. So just stick a pin in that while we will go over it. Um, and we also need to talk and think about with that, you know, are we going to have how many additional costs um, for maintenance, you know, with our warranty being expired? Um, well, we need to be replacing this car soon. So these are also really, really, really important um, things that we need to think about before we go into the used car um, buying process, um, which, you know, for some is great and for others may not be the best scenario. So, you know, definitely good things to think about and do research on. Okay, great, Nicole. I appreciate that. Uh Talking about leasing a vehicle, and again, I mentioned earlier, this is going to be one of the hot topics that a lot of folks were asking about. Um, we're going to go over the advantages and disadvantages here. Um, with the advantages, drive a new car every few years without having to worry about selling your old one. Uh, this is for the buyer who is looking to trade cars every few years, uh, not holding on to anything for a long time. Uh, Possibly lowering the monthly payment uh, with a lease. Uh, it does help. Uh, the manufacturers have given super uh, low uh, monthly payments uh, pertaining to leases versus outright purchases. Uh, so know that, that that is definitely a positive uh, on a lease. Uh, lease cars are typically covered by the manufacturer's warranty. Uh, aside from abuse of the vehicle, Typically, it's going to be covered most of the way. So not to worry if something happens, breaks down. Uh, you're not really needing to incur any cost there. Uh, and then the required upfront cost of the lease, typically very low. Sometimes it's simply the month, first month's payment. Um, it's not usually too much on, uh, out of pocket when you're buying a lease. Um, the disadvantages is... As I mentioned, the vehicle does not belong to you. So every few years, you're going to be giving it back and getting a new one. Um, the It is difficult to get out of the lease contract if you become unable to handle the payments. This is a big one. Uh, there are certain circumstances where you can get out, but I would say that in a uh, large part, a lease is designed to go 36 months or 48 months or whatever the term you decided to do. Um, if in between that somewhere along the way, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to be able to get out of that lease. So just be careful and know that once you commit, it's a commitment for that term. Uh, the cost of insuring the lease can also be very high. Uh, it's, it's definitely a little bit more than your typical 
uh, your car purchase. So keep that in mind and make sure you've done your research on that. Uh, and then there's limitations on the number of miles you can drive. Uh, you got to keep it in good condition. Again, you know, as long as you're not abusing it, it, it should be fine. But uh, I will say the amount of miles you can drive is a big one. Uh, I've seen anywhere from 10 cents a mile over the amount of miles you've off, you've uh, committed to, or I've seen up to 50 cents per mile. And typically, that's going to be on your higher end vehicles, your Mercedes, your Lexus. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind and, and ask that question. If you're going in, you know, hey, what is the mileage after my total mile? Uh, they do have options. You can go from 10,000 miles, 8,000 miles. You can do 12,000 miles. Sometimes they offer 15,000 miles. Uh, these are per year. So just kind of manage your mileage throughout the year and just make sure that you're not going too far over so you don't have this large lump sum to have to pay at the end. And we're going to move on to financing. So you picked the car and settled on the price. And this is where all your hard work can be rewarded. Um, financing is going to determine your final payment and the lender that you're going to be working with. Uh, knowing your score can help you give a good can help give you a good idea on your interest rate. This is extremely important. We've discussed this before on the previous slides. Um, get a good idea of where you're at. Know your credit karma score. Look at your credit card. See if you can see the score that they're giving you there. A lot of credit cards do that. Uh, get your free annual credit report. Uh, making sure that you know that score is going to help you to dictate whether or not, or correction, it's going to help you to know what your interest rate should be around. Uh, shorter terms will typically offer a lower rate, so go ahead and stay play with the numbers. You, you've got a 60-month term, and you want to try to put a different, a lower number in for 60 months versus in 72 or 78 or 84 even. Uh, the 84 months is going to be a lot higher in rate, uh, maybe not a lot, but it is going to be an increase in rate uh, versus a 60-month versus a 36-month even. So go ahead and stay to play with those numbers. Uh, prepare to make a down payment. Uh, if necessary, it can offset the payment increase if the rate's not what you expected. Um, sometimes you could go in and be pleasantly surprised and your payment's lower than you thought it would be. Sometimes you can go in and have the, ex the unexpected higher payment. Uh, but knowing that you may have to put some money down will, again, help you to become an educated buyer and knowing what you're dealing with when you go in. Um, getting a free approval. Know what you're going to expect when you come to this part. Uh, we do offer this option here at Edition Finance. You can call in. You can do it on your on the website. Uh, but we do offer that. And it uh, does not take a whole lot of time, but they will give you the rate and the term based off of what you're telling them. If you don't know what the car is, They'll give you a general idea of what you're going to be looking for until you find the car, and then we'll know exactly what it is. Our rates are published, so uh, you'll be able to see what about your rate is going to be and kind of go from there. Um, know the payment you're comfortable with. Uh, you can always walk away if you haven't signed. And I think Nicole alluded to this earlier about you know going in with an idea of, okay, I'm not going to go over this. That's what you need to do so you're not getting yourself into a trip bag. Once you've considered all of the extra debts that you have and make sure everything else is in line, uh, hopefully this webinar has helped you to do that, uh, knowing what you're more able to be able to make. Uh, your payments that you're able to make each month uh, is very important. Uh, and then consider protecting your investment with products like gap and warranty. They are important products. Um, a lot of times at a dealership, You've got, you know, somebody selling you a product. You know, I've heard it many times uh, throughout my career where, you know, somebody comes in and really could have used gap and used warranty. Um, it is a protection of your investment. So it is not necessarily always a bad thing to get the gap and the warranty. You have to decide what's going to be best for you, payment-wise, uh, coverage-wise. So it is a peace of mind, and I, I think that uh, – I would highly recommend it when you're going to look at a vehicle, at least considering it. And with that, I'm going to have, turn it over to Nicole to explain what each of those are so that you have a better understanding of, of the products that they offer. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, I, you know, I think that one of the number one things when purchasing a new or used vehicle, um, you know, or purchasing really anything that you're, you know, working hard to get, maintain, is that we want the reliability factor of it. We crave reliability. We crave safety. We want to make sure that what we are putting our hard money that we work for into is going to be able to make it and that um, we're going to be safe and it's all going to work out in the end. That's the goal. So we've got, we want to, we want to protect these investments. So we've got gap insurance, also known as um, guaranteed asset protection, asset being your vehicle. Um, and what this is, is that in a situation of a total loss, which could be um, a car accident that your vehicle got totaled in, it could be your car was stolen, so auto theft. It could be um, flooding, it could be fire, anything that deems your your car as a total loss is when um, your insurance company and your lender who holds the loan on your vehicle, have you ever heard the, the, uh, the term mind the gap? Well, this is pretty much it right here. Um, we've got your insurance company will pay what they believe is the vehicle's worth at the time of the loss. And again, remember we said your vehicle can depreciate in some cases the second you drive off the lot, all right? And gap insurance or guaranteed asset protection covers the difference of what you owe and what the insurance is willing to pay. So say we've bought a car for, we'll just round it up, for $20,000 and uh, you had a loan um, for thirty six, but at month. 12, unfortunately, you've gotten in a car accident or it flooded or something happened and we're at a total loss, all right? Well, your vehicle necessarily on, say, your paperwork, um, what we owe, say, 17000 or whatever, but the uh, car's depreciated, say, 5000 So that gap is going to cover that 3000 difference for you. Um, instead of you having to come out of pocket. And again, that's just the difference of what the value of the car is in the time of the total loss versus what you actually owe on paper to the lender. So it, it helps in some in some, um, some circumstances. Extended warranty. Again, this is for peace of mind. We, we talked about new vehicles, you know, coming with manufacturer warranties. And um, used vehicles, sometimes they've already expired or they're close to expiring. So this is a product that can help you beyond that point, you know, beyond that point of you've got that bumper to bumper care. And now what happens if if something goes wrong? So extended warranties um, are really a tempting um, option for customers who really want to have that peace of mind that if something happens, I've got somewhere to go and I've got something that can help me out. Okay, great. So we're going to go over some best practices uh, that Nicole and I had come up with, and I think uh, they should really help you to kind of uh, know what you're going into when you're purchasing a vehicle. Uh, it's the second biggest purchase that most people will buy will do in their life uh, next to a home purchase. Uh, so it's really important that you get all your factors in line before you go in and try to be the most educated buyer you can. Uh, do your research up front. We talked a lot about going online, looking at the cars, looking at the price. Um, consider shopping during a sales event or a holiday sale. Uh, this was a question that got asked by a few people that, you know, what's the best time to purchase a vehicle? Um, you can always call a dealership and see, hey, when when is your next sale event? And a lot of times they'll tell you. They're very open about that because they want to have a really good sale event. So they can get people in the door and try to you know get you to purchase that vehicle that you've been looking for. Um, during the holidays is a good time. Uh, it, definitely, they'll have a lot of holiday sales. I think we can all attest to seeing them, numerous commercials during holidays. So be on the lookout for those types of events. Um, new year models, uh, current year or um, it, I should say end of year vehicles that. Uh, offer larger incentives. So as of now, we're in March, almost April, you've got a vehicle that's a 2020. They're going to be a lot more willing to get rid of that vehicle at a lower price than they would at 2021 because the manufacturer is saying, hey, we need you to make room for this 2020 on our lot. So 
so we can put these new 2021s out there. So there's a lot of motivation from the manufacturer by way of rebates and incentives on those vehicles that are from the previous year model. So end of the year is the time that you might want to look at trying to go in and consider shopping for a vehicle. Uh, finding out about the rebates and incentives on new vehicles. Um, you know, rebates, and I want to make sure we're clear, rebates are only going to be found on new vehicles. Uh, you won't find a rebate on a used vehicle because this is not the dealer's money. It's actually the manufacturer's money that they send to the dealership to say, hey, here's our product. Please give them a discount on this vehicle and allow them to be able to purchase this vehicle with that discount. Uh, you would not find that on a used vehicle. So keep that in mind. It's very important. Uh, but note what those vehicle rebates are. And again, you can call a dealer, contact the dealer, however you might do it, and they should be able to tell you. Uh, again, I've mentioned the end-of-year models. Uh, take a look at that. They might offer, instead of a $2,000 uh, rebate on a 2021, they might offer a $4,000 rebate. Uh, get your pre-approval. It's important because then you can decide how how much do I – can I afford? You know, you'll already know what your term is going to be, what your rate's going to be. Uh, don't forget to check the car facts. I put this on here again to make sure that everybody understood on used vehicles. Make sure you check that. Uh, there are a lot of scenarios where you don't check that. It could cause issues down the road. So just be careful with that. Um, don't sign unless you're comfortable. This is extremely important. Do not sign unless you're comfortable. Uh, the last thing you want to do is commit to something for six or seven years that you're not comfortable with doing. So um, just kind of be mindful of everything before you go in and be ready if you have to, to leave. Um, this next one, use an auto loan calculator. Uh, I do this with my family and friends because I want to make sure you're realistic about the price of or the payment that you're going to be paying. Uh, there's a lot of online calculators that you can use. Uh, you could probably Google auto loan calculator and 20 will come up. Mm -hmm. What I would recommend is these items, remembering what the sales price is going to be, whether you have positive or negative equity in your trade. So if you have $2,000, you have to add that to negative equity. You have to add that to the sales price. If you have $2,000 positive equity, you would take that off of the sales price. Uh, your sales tax for the county that you live in. Uh, this is very important. Uh, that's a huge part. If the car is worth $32,000 online and your sales tax is $2,000, then you know your total price is going to be $34,000. A lot of folks forget that. I always throw out enough $1,500 in additional fees. Uh -huh. This is for titles, registration, uh, dealer's fee, uh, et cetera. And I want to make sure you know that can always vary. Typically, fifteen hundred is going to cover most of what I'm saying. What those additional fees are going to be, uh, a lot of times it's going to be less than that. But sometimes it can be more. Just so you know, uh, and then consider your warranty and your gap. Make sure that you know that you're counting for that those extra products. Uh, when you add a thousand or two or three thousand dollars to your deal, obviously it's going to it's going to increase your payment. But with all of those things together, and having your pre approval and knowing your interest rate and your term. All of those things together will tell you approximate payment, and you can go in feeling comfortable you're going to be close to that. Um, and the last thing I would tell you, this is a business transaction. It is the second largest purchase you'll ever make. So go in willing and ready to negotiate. Uh, it's not always going to be, you know, the first offer is the best offer. So make sure you understand that. And they're in business just like you're coming in for business. So Together, you guys can find a happy medium to be able to feel comfortable with the payment that you're looking for, the price that you're looking for. And let's be honest, uh, we don't typically go in looking at the price of the vehicle. We go in looking at what is my monthly payment going to be? So just keep that in mind when you go in. Uh, don't get too frustrated. Try to go in with the business mindset so you understand, okay, this is a business transaction. They're going to try to sell it to me for as much as they can, and I'm going to try to buy it for as low as I can. And then somewhere in the middle, there's a meeting point, and hopefully everybody's happy at that point. Absolutely. All right. And then we're going to go into uh, addition financials, indirect lending. Uh, so we have a difference between direct and indirect. And we have made it extremely simple because we've partnered with all kinds of dealerships out of the Central Florida area, uh, including Orlando um, and all 
surrounding area, um, all of Lake, uh, Lake County, Brevard County, Volusia County, and we're actually just extending into Polk County uh, to start uh, activating some dealerships to where if you've got that pre-approval, you walk in and we are a signed up dealer with them, uh, they'll be able to tell you at that moment, you could go ahead and do the in, the paperwork right then and there and it's a done deal. You don't have to go back and forth. You can just you know keep everything going at that moment and not have to worry about coming back and doing this paper or that paper or going back online and having to resign something. Uh, we've done this for convenience for our members. So it is important that you know that you feel comfortable in doing it that way. You're not going to get any better um, deal, whether you go through the direct or the indirect. Um, but we also, um, once you pick the perfect car and negotiated the best deal, the dealer will complete the application and find financing paperwork on the spot. Uh, if you do visit a dealer after out credit union hours, uh, we'll have an answer the next morning. Um, even if you don't have a pre-approval, uh, we'll be able to look at that loan application and be able to get them an answer the following morning to where they can say, hey, come on back. We're ready to sign you up. Uh, these would be extreme circumstances because we have people on board until 9 p.m. every night except for Sunday until 7. So uh, if you're outside of those hours, typically it's going to be the next business day and we'll be able to get you an answer quickly. All right. So throughout um, this presentation, we've talked about all the different types of resources from finding the value of your car to checking your credit score to getting pre-approved. We just discussed um, our partners with our dealerships. And these are all of the places that you can access all this information. Um, our, our website at addition for pre-approval, and we also have all of our partnerships um, with our dealerships um, located there as well. We've got the K, uh, KBB Kelly Blue Book for your vehicle value, um, as, long, uh, as well as Edmonds and NADA or NADA. Um, we've got this www.annualcreditreport.com. This is a great, great, great tool to gauge where your credit, um, your credit score lies. And this is the, honestly the first place I would start um, if I were you to really get a clean gauge on where to go from there. Um, we've got, if you know, if we're talking about reliability and and you know what car is the best for what, the safercar.com. Um, would be a great help for that. And cre again, credit karma, to see where your score is, to estimate. Again, nothing's going to be exact, but it's a really, really good gauge to see where you're currently at and to, um, and to break it down whether you need to work on that or if, you got, if you're good to go. I would reiterate, too, on the annualcreditreport.com. Uh, before this presentation, I was, it was to my surprise how many uh, websites Say that you get a free annual credit report. I, I recall here seeing free annual credit report. I saw free report, free credit report. Um, the one that we have posted on the screen here is the one that you can get for free each year. And uh, you only get one, but use it at an opportune time when you're buying something, especially like this, that's one of the, sec one of the most important purchases of your life. You know, and again, with this... Um credit report, you know, sometimes if you're unfamiliar with them, they could they can seem a, a little difficult to read. You can always take this report, you can bring it into your branch, you can talk to your your you know, your bankers who are familiar with this and they can help you also create a a plan if we if you need help getting on track for sure. All right. And now we're at the question phase. Uh, we're going to take a small break and get some questions together, and we'll be right back with you. Okay, and we're back. Um, we did have some very valuable questions that I think are going to help us to uh, lock this thing down and hopefully make you a better car buyer. Um, the first one is, can negotiation occur during the sales period? The answer is absolutely. Uh, we want to make sure that you guys know it is a negotiation. Uh, I alluded to this on that last slide or a few slides ago uh, that we want to make sure that you know going into this is a business transaction. So feel free to negotiate. And if you're not comfortable, you can always walk away. It's not a it's not a gallon of milk where you have to pay the pet price. It's whatever price you decide on that the dealer's comfortable with. 
how much are you going to be able to work with them? They, they're going to sell it for as high as you can, they can, and you're going to buy it for as low as you can. So uh, hopefully somewhere in the middle you guys can meet. Um, how long are pre-approvals good for? Nicole? I would say um, just about everybody has about a 30-day stint on that pre-approval, and that's because that is based off where your credit score was at the time. Um, so 30 days. You got 30 days from when you, you know, get approved for whatever rate and term. Um, so use them wisely if that's the, if that's the route you're going. Uh, just know, at addition financial, we don't pull your credit more than once. So if you get a pre-approval at the branch, let's say, or through the through the phone number or the website, um, when you go into the dealership, they'll need to resubmit your credit to us. But we pull the same credit bureau for 30 days. So it's not going to have any extra inquiries on your credit. It'll be simply the same credit excuse, excuse me, same credit bureau from the day you pulled it for 30 days, and that will that will be good. If you happen to need to. It is very possible to submit a new uh, pre-approval request or go into the dealership after 30 days. It would just at that point be another credit pool on your credit. Um, the next question, how do I look up the invoice price of a car? This is a great question because the invoice is not something that you typically have in hand. Uh, it is something that the dealership gets. Uh, the dealership gets this from the ma manufacturer as, say, a receipt uh, from the manufacturer when the big truck drops off all the vehicles. So uh, the invoices come straight from the dealership. It's not something that anyone else should have access to. But you can always ask for the invoice of the vehicle. Uh, are the interest rates at addition typically lower than the dealers? And I wanted to address this question because a dealer does not typically have an interest rate for you. What they do is they look for the interest rate from the lender, and that's where we come in. Uh, we do have some great rates. Like I said, they are published online. Uh, when you get your pre-approval, you'll be able to see those. But I did want to make sure I clarified that question uh, because it is not the dealer's interest rate that is there. It is the lenders that they work with, and we are being one of those lenders uh, – we do offer our, a pretty decent rate, given the term, the year of the car, et cetera. All right, the next question is, how do we go about refinancing? Uh, refinancing is a good way to either lower your monthly payment again or to try to pay off the car sooner. Um, refinance typically will come into play when you have a situation where your credit has improved um, from the moment you bought the car. Let's say you pay on it for a year, two years down the road. You're saying, hey, I would like to see if I qualify for a better interest rate. Uh, we all know that if you pay more interest, you're paying more payment. So the best way to get that lowered is to refinance. Uh, without trading the vehicle. So if you like the vehicle and you want to keep it, refinancing is definitely an option for you. Uh, you can go through our website, just as you would for pre-approval. Uh, you can also go through our phone number and also go through our branches to be able to do that. Uh, the next question, should you buy the warranty and gap package? And since Nicole explained both of these products, I'm going to kind of turn that over to her. You know, this is going to be for preference, um, where you are, what you need out of this vehicle. Um, personally, for me, I, I do. I would. I like the sense of reliability and security if something were to happen. Um, but since we've discussed what GAP and extended warranty does, you know, really, that's going to be up to you and to and to, and to your preference and to where you are and where you see yourself going with this, this vehicle. Okay, great. Thanks, Nicole. And we're going to take one more because we are out of time and uh, we're going to wrap it up with, is it better to finance or just to take, just to pay off quickly with cash? Um, there is a a big 
and, and this is a very important question, and I appreciate the person who asked this, because if you are buying cash, let's say you drive off the lot, you automatically lose any value that you have in that vehicle. Furthermore, if you were to get into a total loss accident, you've lost all that value and you don't have the car anymore to be able to hold that value. So uh, in my opinion, and it's just my opinion and my best recommendation is not to buy cash if you can help it. Um, if you're talking a smaller vehicle, sure, a, a smaller price vehicle, but going to drop $30,000 cash typically is not going to be your best bet. Um, doing a little bit of financing and then if, you know, things are going well and you want to go ahead and pay it off in the end, you can. But uh, my recommendation is to have that loan because it really does kind of protect your, your interest in that vehicle. Uh, if you were to pay cash, you wouldn't have gap insurance. So if you were to get into a total loss, there would be no gap insurance to be able to cover that vehicle. The difference between what an insurance company would pay and what the vehicle was worth. So in my opinion, that would not be uh, as good. I'm going to roll that right into the 0% interest that everybody may or may not have seen uh, that's going on right now. 0% interest is not always the best method. Um, the reason that they offer 0% is because like we were talking about rebates, they will take some of those rebates away and offer you the 0%. And it sounds great. It looks great on the contract. You have a 0% interest charge. Uh, but it is, I do recommend you to look at the big picture when it, you talk about 0%. If you were to go with financing and let's say your percentage rate is there without a zero, how much was that interest calculation going to be instead of taking 0% based off of what they're willing to offer? Um, 0% will offer a, a smaller rebate at times and paying an interest rate might offer uh, a bigger rebate. Uh, so you have to really be careful on that and just look at the big picture on what, what's going to be most advantageous. Uh, I'd like to thank Nicole for joining us. Uh, we're going to go ahead from here, wrap it up. Again, we apologize for the technical difficulties in the end, and we appreciate you guys staying with us. Uh, you will get an email uh, ex with this slide here, and uh, hopefully everything's been very helpful for you, and you've be found yourself to become a car-buying ace. <laughs> have a great day, everyone. Have a good one, guys.